Hello everyone, Jinrock the Breaker is the first boss in the Throne of Thunder and this is a pretty straightforward fight. We remind you that we have a written guide for this boss that you should probably take a look at. The link is in the description. You will need two tanks for this fight, but the number of healers is up to personal preference. Two or three healers in 10 man and between 5 and 7 and 25 man are all viable options. This is a single phase, single target fight. The main mechanic of the fight is a void zone called conductive water. There are other mechanics in the fight which we will talk about a little bit later. Over the course of the fight, Jinrock will create four conductive water void zones, one at a time, at regular intervals. Each conductive water void zone starts out small and then expands until it covers one quarter of the room. Initially, each conductive water is beneficial. Standing in it applies fluidity, a buff that increases damage done, healing taken and nature damage taken. So everyone except the tanks is advised to stand in conductive waters. After it has been active for one minute, Jinrock will compromise the conductive water and transform it into electrified waters, which causes players standing in it to take a lot of damage instead of receiving a beneficial buff. Shortly after that, he will spawn a new conductive water and so on. By the time the last conductive water has been compromised, your raid will be out of room and you will really need to have the boss killed by then. There will still be some safe areas left, such as the very center of the room, but they do not give you enough space to deal with the other mechanics and you will eventually wipe. Given the tuning of the fight at the time of making this guide, raids with an average item level of 500 or more should hardly reach the fourth conductive water. Aside from the conductive waters, there are several other abilities that are used during the fight. Focused lightning requires random raid members to kite orbs that follow them to safe locations. Thundering throw creates a conductive water and requires a tank switch. Static burst deals moderate raid-wide damage and causes the current tank to receive a debuff, which requires an immediate tank switch. Lightning storm compromises a conductive water and deals raid-wide damage. Now we're going to take a look at each of these abilities. By far, the most important of these abilities is Focused Lightning. Jinrock casts this ability every 15 seconds or so. He creates an orb of lightning which fixates on a random ranged raid member or healer and moves towards them at relatively high speed. While the orb is moving around, it deals nature damage every half a second to all players within 5 yards of it. When the orb reaches the player on whom it is fixated, it detonates, dealing damage in an 8 yard radius and leaving behind a small lightning on the ground called a lightning fissure. The lightning fissure persists for a very long time and it constantly deals damage to players within 5 yards of it. Properly kiting the orb is a crucial part of the fight. If detonation occurs inside a conductive water, people in that conductive water will take a lot of damage. If the detonation occurs in electrified waters, players within 8 yards will die. If the orb comes in contact with a lightning fissure, the raid will take a lot of damage and players will most likely die. To deal with focused lightning, ranged DPS and healers need to stand close to the inner edge of the conductive water so that if they are fixated upon by focused lightning, they can quickly run out of the conductive water and kite the orb close to one of the walls of the room. Finally, if while expanding a conductive water reaches an existing lightning fissure, then the lightning fissure is detonated and all players inside the conductive water take a moderate amount of damage. Thundering Throw is an ability that Jinrock casts at the current tank 30 seconds after the start of the fight and every 1 minute and 30 seconds after that. This is the ability that is used to create each of the four conductive water void zones. So. Jinrock picks up his current tank and throws them at one of the four Mogu statues located around the room. On impact, the tank smashes the statue and lands in front of it, being stunned for 6 seconds, stunning and dealing damage to any raid members within 14 yards, and most importantly, creating a conductive water void zone at that location. It is important to note that when thrown, the tank's threat on the boss is reset, so the other tank needs to taunt immediately to ensure no DPS players are killed. Every 25 seconds, Jinrock casts Static Burst, which has an impressive spell effect and deals moderate, unavoidable raid damage. 3 seconds after Static Burst, the current tank gets debuffed with 10 stacks of Static Wound, which lasts for 25 seconds. Every 3 seconds, the debuff will lose a stack. 
For each stack of static wound, the tank takes an amount of nature damage each time they receive a melee hit, and part of this damage is also dealt to the raid. Therefore, as soon as the debuff is applied on one tank, the other tank needs to taunt Jinrock to ensure that the tank with high static wound stacks does not get meleeed. Static wound is cast too often to allow for all the stacks to drop off the other tank, so there will sometimes be tank and raid damage from a tank with low stacks of static wound tanking Jinrock. Due to this, tanks should avoid being in conductive water. The final ability is Lightning Storm, which Jinrock uses to compromise the conductive water and transform it into electrified waters. This ability is cast one minute after the current conductive water was created. Jinrock will go to the center of the room and begin channeling Lightning Storm for 15 seconds. In addition to compromising the conductive water, this ability deals heavy raid-wide nature damage every second, so the entire raid should stack up at his location in the center of the room and use healing and defensive cooldowns to survive. This is all you need to know to defeat Jinrock the Breaker, but if you want to find out more details, tips and tricks, you can check our written guide as well as our forums. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.